Now tell me who wanna fuck with us? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, I bang and let your fucking brain sing. Snitches, fucking all the name for bitches with riches. You we say Friday? Up in they hosiery. You a say? I'm gonna tell them my father bust and then loaded me. Think he just finished sniffing the key and dipping the D's. Don't hate him. Shout out Fan Meal, Gangstar Ass. Running the common pot. Nigga, I was born in the drop. Let's go. Ball in the pot. Shake the feds and bust shots at them street cops. Fuck your point is. My point is double fours at your fucking jaws. Point in. Hollow point shit. Four point six. Need I say more? How do you get the point, bitch? Come on. What type of nigga slang and bang in the streets? Bad boy. What type of nigga stay in the trunk for weeks? Bad boy. What type of nigga fly that nigga? Bad boy. Aim for the sky, cop the shit and shoot. Men striking on the floor. Hang you on your horse, second the Christ scientists examine it for flaws. For the crystal, on the yeah, way to yeah. trial, we go law, got the nigga head. Niggas in the game, the that was good. You say Friday was good. And the dollar bills wipe the sears from my eyes. Whoa. Fuck your niggas, hope you die slow. Whoa. That was our court test. It's even though it's tuck of protest. Can't fuck with you, we got niggas. With your yes, game running around talking this and talking that. See me in the streets, try to give me that. Andrew Cooley and that. Last niggas, ass niggas, got me fucked up in the game. Get your shit stained. Get five mics, nigga, get me the king. Do the shit to clean my money, dummies. Clean the wrist out, cock the piss down. Nigga, talk shit now, huh? What type of nigga slang and bang in the streets? Bad boy. What type of nigga stay in the trunk for weeks? Bad boy. What type of nigga fly with me? Bad boy. Aim for the sky, cock the shit. Shit, man. It's a bad boy. One life, one shine. Y'all niggas they say nothing like a mom. Every line, I live it, I write it with a pencil. So niggas die, let this be right. Hey, the side, it's a G thing. Me and Puffin say bark, set it off. Bitches fucking toughest with G strings. Menage, bust shots at your crew. Another charge as the Gulf Stream fly through the fog. This is. The big, 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 biggest show in the game. So Monday, we gave it to you. Trick Daddy, Dion Cole. Tuesday, Spike Lee. Wednesday, Irv Lorenzo Gotti. Thursday, I got into my preacher shit, my evangelists, started talking that real shit. Now, we got Sean, the living legend, the man done did his time. This week has been insane. The competition is studying my DNA, my blueprint. But not like me. I switch it up all the time. Shout out Fan Mio. If you want to connect with your favorite artist. Or GameStar app. If you're a gamer and you want to play against your favorite artist. Shout out to Timberland the King. Mayor Dre from Cool and Dre. Co-executive producer. Azariah Malone Cartagena. You know what it is. Can't nobody fuck with this. I've been giving you five months straight of insanity. Shit you thought you knew, but you ain't really know. Because you don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. I love this shit, Dre. I'm telling you, man. I, I, I'm having such a great time with this, man. This shit crazy, man. It ain't no sneak. You want me to take the sneak off my shit and put it up there? He said, with a sneak ass joke. I said, you want me to take my sneak off and put it? The fucking botch ain't enough for you. This shit ain't enough. Fuck it. I'll get it for you. This brand new... If I ain't walk in this studio, I'd have licked the bottom of this shit for y'all. Chinese, too. The Chinese. The Asian version. Don't play with me, man. 
Don't call a guard out. Do say Friday. Do say Friday. Do say Friday. Oh. And so, um, shout out to the locks. They got an album out right now. Um, we support it. We just post it again. See if my brother Shine is here. So we can turn the fuck up. Not yet. And so you know chandeliers and sneakers fucking right. Congratulations to somebody. I seen a guy post up the um AP chandelier from the Bronx. I don't know who he is, but he said, yo, first guy from the Bronx with a chandelier. I had to call Pristine Jewelers really quick and say, yo, the first guy who ever had a chandelier is from the Bronx. His name Joe Crack the Dawn. And I'm petty like that. But salute to you. I don't know who you is, but the guy from the Bronx who got a chandelier, God bless you, my brother. I like that. This is by far the biggest show in the game. We are not playing with these people. And we will not stop. We will not be undersold. We will not stop. We will not be undersold. Y'all see what's going on out there. Major protest. Shout out to the Reverend Al Sharpton. Friend of the show. He's been on the show. Shout out to Benjamin Crump. He's been on our show. Shout out to Mika Mallory. She's been on our show. Erica Ford. She's been on our show. We talk about real shit here. Real change. Hold up. Yeah, the guard ain't on there yet. <clears throat> and uh, when I started this show, they said, damn, Joe, I love you, Joe, man. Do it once a week, once a month. How you going to keep going on? How you going to be able to bring all these stars out? Last week, Mark Anthony, Mary J, Keisha Cole, Stephanie Mills, Keith Sweat through a concert. How you going to keep this shit going? I said, man, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. This week was such a big week. I thought last week was big. This week is such a big week. How, how do we continue the shit? How do we continue? What's up, Jess? It's the big, 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 big show. And so, I just saw a video. <laughs> well, I don't vote Trump. I mean, I mean, you must have been under a rock or something. You guys vote Trump. That's you guys. You guys love Trump. Not me, bro. That's your guy. And don't and don't and don't think blacks and Latinos ain't voting for Trump. They voting for that guy. Don't think they not voting for him. They definitely voting for him. Shout out to uh, Maestros. They gave me a nice birthday cake, Maestros. I went up in there, just got me a nice pony ribeye. little salad with that. And still they try to bring me back to the fat land. Bring out the butter cake. Now, I'm not going to lie. I ate the whipped cream. That was the least damage I could do. If you've been to Maestro's, they bring out that butter cake. I don't know a human being that can say no to that butter cake. I did. I ate the whipped cream. That was the lesser of the evils. I tried. And yes, I worked out today. 
every day. I got an elliptical in my bedroom. Shit is like a Rolls Royce. And so that it's so easy to talk yourself out of working out. That if you got the shit right next to the bed, to the bed, though. It's not for me. I can't lie to myself. I got to throw my knees on. Because you know I wear them knees, the cushion. Shout out Steve Stoke from the Miami Heat. He gave me professional knee cushion. Because my knees ain't so good. And I just get on that motherfucker. And I'm gone. I'm waiting on Poe. Yes, sir. And so. That's. Well, if you can't vote. Why don't you try. Encouraging the others to vote. Bring the old lady from the neighborhood. If you can't vote, you can knock on the door and ask the old lady and the old men, do they want to vote and walk with them to the voting place? Shout out LeBron James. I don't know if it's a rumor, but I'm hearing the NBA is going to bring the polling sites to the arenas. You heard that, Jay? That's major, because you know they've been working hard on that voter suppression, meaning they don't want you to vote. And some people say it ain't important. My vote don't count. But there's a reason why they don't want us to go and vote. And so, especially down in the ATL and all that, they've been like really fucking with the people. So this is such an important election. That uh, is such an important election that uh, you could you can make yourself, even if you're a felon, take the lady, take your mother, take your grandmother, take everybody down, support them while they vote, take them back. There's many ways you could do it. You can't vote. It might be hot. Like in Miami, that should be 10,000. When I went to vote for Obama, I stood online for like four or six hours. 100 degrees. Everybody need a water here and there. You might want to give somebody a water. And remind them who to vote for. Because sometimes people don't really know who they voting for. There's no other way Donald Trump won. Everybody who said they wasn't going to vote for him, voted for him. Real shit. Yeah, Yonkers, Yonkers, y'all scaring me, man, because y'all the only ones that got permission for the strip club. I haven't been up there, but I heard that shit is like a zoo in that bitch. Not one mask in sight. Y'all motherfuckers there. Y'all in that Yonkers strip club legend. And so my brother's a little late, but he'll be here. He told me he'll be here. He'll be here. And so Spike Lee came on here and kept trying to tell you, you got to vote. You got to vote. And he ain't lying, man, because you don't want to wake up. I don't know how you felt. And I'm sorry to my friends, my fans that are Republicans, because, you know, it's two sides of the story. There's people who like Fat Joe's music that love Donald Trump. Most rappers and artists, they ain't out here talking this shit on the front line. But me, I'm my own boy, so I don't really give a fuck. So I'll tell you like it is. And so, you know, I might have lost some fans from this show. Because I speak the real shit. Might have been some guys like, oh my God, what are you talking about? Fat Joe, what's love? I can't believe this. 
You don't like Donald, the D? <laughs> and so, uh, no, I don't like the D. <laughs> and, uh, as simple as that, and, and, and it's a lot of hate. And this whole country has seen, and I, I know they say this every time, you know, an election comes around that this is the best time ever. This is the realest time ever. Yo, listen to me, man. You better get out there and vote. This is the most entire important time to vote. Let me give you one, right? So the way Donald Trump was talking and the Republicans was talking was like, yo, don't vote for Joe Biden. Your city's going to burn up. It's going to be out of control. It's going to be this. If you vote for Biden, it's really, well, that's happening now. While you are president. President of law and order and all that shit. They doing that shit now. Black people are dying. Cops are killing them. And so what's going to change? Motherfuckers are delusional, man. Gentlemen, without further ado, we never force advertise. Yo, Sean, what's up, my brother? What's happening, brother? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm in Belize, working hard, trying to help people, trying to inspire people, trying to uplift and empower my people. Sean, I want to take you back. And I know you're doing I know you're doing incredible things. And it's it's the reason why it's the reason why I'm gonna take you back. I know where you at now. Yeah. It's the reason why I'm gonna take you back. Because somebody might be in that same transitional phase and need to hear what you went through so they can be inspired to take that same move. Or they can be the powers that be watching this and they could finally believe a story of redemption that someone can change absolutely they don't believe you can change they do not believe it absolutely. they do not believe fat joe has changed fat joe was a gangster he's a drug dealer he was this he'll never change he's faking it when he talks positive that's what they think sean yeah. And so, my brother, thanks for coming on here. Uh, how did you first get your record deal? Your first, how do you get in the game? You know, um, I, uh, I got in the game, I was so determined. And I was so, uh, I was so passionate. And I was so invincible. I think one of the things, you know, I'm 41 years old right now. One of the things that we have as young people, all the young people, you know, I, I encourage them to tap into that invincibility that young people have. You know, when I was 18, you know, I felt, I felt like Neo from the Matrix. I felt like I could do absolutely anything. And I had been through a lot. You know, when I was um, 16, I had almost lost my life. You know, I, I had gotten shot, and after I got shot, you know, I had made a promise to my mom, you know, that I would stay out of trouble, you know, after we dealt with whatever people deal with once they get shot. You know, once you take care of that situation, then, um, you know, I had promised my mom that I would not continue along that road you know I had promised my mom that I would stay on a different path and try to do different things uh, but that experience that near death experience made me even more invincible because I felt you know if I could you know stare death in the, in, in the face and I blink. I think I said that in one of my raps. You know, I stared death in the, in the face and, and never blink. 
you know, what, what, what couldn't I do? So what I used to do as, as part of the promise I made to my mom, you know, to stay off the streets, to not be like my cousins, and, and to go to school, get my high school diploma. I've got a, a bike. I bought a, 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 a 18 speed bike and I started delivering packages in Manhattan. So I, I used to ride my 18 speed bike that I got from my cousin Ron Du in Brooklyn. What's up to everybody in Brooklyn? Everybody got a cousin Ron Du. Yeah, yeah. Everybody tennis got court. A cousin Ron du. <laughs> yeah, tennis court, um, Church Avenue, Newkirk. Fourth Avenue, I got a bike from him, and I said, you know, I just graduated high school. I'm going to go, you know, I got to get a job. I told my mom that I was going to do the right thing, and, you know, I, I can't disappoint Mama Love. So I used to ride from Brooklyn over the Brooklyn Bridge to Manhattan, and I'd be delivering messages, packages, boxes, everything. But the places that I'd be delivering the messages would be Sony, you know, it would be uh, Loud Records. I remember one time I went up to Def Jam. Russell was there. I was like, listen, man, you got to listen to me. I, I'm the best thing that you ever going to hear. I used to see the street team vans. And I'd be on my bike delivering a message. And I'd chase them down and, and spit for them. And uh, so one day I was in my barber shop. You know, I'll never forget my, my barber topper. And, you know, the barbershop is the realest place that you can go. You know, barbers don't lie. You know, that's the, that's the most ruthless, brutal place of honesty that you can go. <laughs> I say that's they, where they, they elect tell you presidents. Truth. I say that's where they elect presidents. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's where it's at. So, so my, my, all the barbers, you know, would always listen to me spit my rhymes. And they'd be like, yeah, Sean, you got it. You got it. You know, you, you better than these dudes on TV. And one day after I finished getting my hair cut, um, a fellow was walking out the barbershop and some just told me, you know, just run up on this guy. And I ran up on him. I said, listen, man, you in the music industry? Because, you know, I'm the best, I'm the best thing out here right now. And I just, you know, hit him with a, with a 16, probably hit him with a, with a 48, with a 72. And... You know, he was blown away, and fortunately for me, he was linked to Don Poole, you know, maximum respect to Don Poole, who was linked to Mark Pitts, who was linked to Puff, uh, you know, who was linked to, to Manny Haley, who right now, you know, he, he managed Future, he managed Nicky, he had managed Keisha Cole at one point, he's doing movies right now, doing great things. And so once I got with those guys, you know, that, that was it. Um, so you get in the game. I get in the game. First, I get with Don Poole. I get with, with, with Imani Haley. Uh, I get with Austin. That was the guy from the barbershop. I don't give him enough credit. I don't know where he's at right now, but wherever he is, I thank you. I pay homage, you know, because he's the one that brought me to everybody else. And once they it's brought me to everybody else, it was me and Manny. I think you know Manny. Me and Manny was driving. I know Manny. Down. I know Manny well. I know Don Poole. Yeah. Happy yeah, belated you know, birthday, Manny. Don Poole. That's my brother. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Don Poole. He got you the know, Brooklyn Manny chop getting, house. Yeah, Manny was getting money in Brooklyn. He was a young, young guy getting money in Brooklyn. So we'd be driving around in the expedition. That's when the expedition just came out. I had my my Nike shoebox of rhymes, you know, and I'd just be writing rhymes every day uh in the in the exhibition, and so, and so I remember around. when you first came out, they yeah. was like, "Yo, Puff signed this kid. He sound like Biggie, though." But before yeah. I got the Puff, before I got the Puff, Leo Cohen locked me in the office. Chris Lighty and Leo Cohen, I, you know, rest in peace, Chris Lighty, baby Chris. You know, he heard about me. You know, he 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 uh had me come over to Violator, which is in the same building as Def Jam over on Barrack Street. Mm -hmm. That's when Swiss Beats was just coming up. And he popped in the Swiss Beats tapes of Beats. And I just went ape on the Beats. And he was like, come on, we're going to see Leo right now. We went to see Leo. I rapped again. I'll never forget Irv Gotti was in there. Uh, again, Jay-Z, I have nothing but love and respect for him. He's a, a, 
a great guy. I admire him. You know, I, I consider him a mentor. But, you know, I was young and invincible. I was talking greasy about him because he didn't want to sign me. In the, in the meeting with Irv Gotti and Leo, and but my, I, I was so hot, Leo was like, we got to sign him right now. He didn't care what I was saying. You know, I, in, in retrospect, I almost, you know, cost myself a deal. But, again, I was so invincible. You know, I had so much confidence that, you know, Leo didn't want me to leave. And then when Puff heard about Leo, heard about Sylvia Rome, heard about, you know, it was a crazy bidding war. He flew me out to uh, the Beverly Hills Hotel in Los Angeles, and, and, and the rest is history. And so how do you take to people saying that you sound like big? I mean, you know, it's been 20 years, and you listen to my voice. And it's, it's your real same, voice. Because I met course. a million. Every fat Puerto Rican sends me a demo and they sound like Big Pun. I'm sorry, like, no way your yeah. voice is like Big Pun's voice. No way you yeah. was born with Big Pun's voice. But 20 years yeah. later, listening to your voice, and anytime I ever yeah. deal with you, it's, it's the, the same sa voice. It's the same voice. Yeah, and you know, if you listen to my father, I actually get my, my vocals from my father. You know, he's one of the, the greatest orators. You know, he's on that Barack Obama level. And, you know, he um, he don't let anybody in. We are closed right now. He has to come back. All right? Thank you. Um, yeah. You know, my father's one of the greatest orators, and I have his voice exactly. You know, when I speak, people listen to me speak, and they think, you know, that I'm my father. So, actually, I sound like my father. So, one of the hardest... Uh, we started off the show with the song. Go outside you, and talk to him, please. You in Jamaica uh, with Wolf, rest in peace. With the kids chasing the bends. Uh, whoa! Yeah. And uh, what was like, was that when everything really, really kicked off? You know, when um, we had recorded that that song, like in uh, in 90, I think it was 99, summer 99, in August, I think this month right here, we was in the Hamptons. Uh, we was in the Hamptons. And you know, I had, as you said, I had taken a lot of heat, because here I was, you know, a young Brooklyn kid, you know, with this baritone, this distinctive baritone. And, you know, whenever you come out, people always try to class you. You know, Chris Brown sound like Usher, you know. Usher <laughs> sound like Michael Jackson. The Weeknd yeah, yeah. sound like Michael Jackson. Until you establish yourself and, you know, you distinguish yourself. But I was taking a lot of heat. You know, I was, I was young. I was reckless, you know, I was, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, you know, I, I, I got a million dollars at the age of 18, nobody ever believed in me, no, nobody ever gave me anything, it was just me and my moms, you know, living a hard life, so once I got that million, you know, I really didn't know how to act, you know. I, they really you know, get me either, me yeah, either, I, I, was, I, I was on one, I heard don't about Don't be mad story. at yourself, me either. Yeah, I heard, I heard about your story where you was taking $50,000 out the, out, out the bank every day. Uh, you Every know, day, man, yeah, I ran so, through millions. My asshole got this tight, Sean. Yeah. When I went so, to the bank, and the, and the man told me, "Yo, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Joe. Yeah, uh, so there's so, no money in here." Yeah, you know, so so we recorded that record, '99, because '98, you know, I was just, you know, having fun, you know, being an 18 year old with a million dollars, you know. But at the end of '98. I'll never forget, you know, I was I was very much into the R and B, the the superstar R and B girls. You know, I'm not gonna say any names, but there was a particular R and B girl and she was a superstar. You know, she was young, you know, had like the number one record song in, in the world, you know, for weeks at a time. And she was, you know, she she was on another level. And, you know, we, we had a little relationship, you know, but I was young. I was from Brooklyn, and I thought that the world was about me. 
And I'll never forget, you know, we had an argument. It was coming to the end of 98. And she was like, listen, you ain't sell one record. I don't know who you think you are, but your little Range Rover and your little platinum Rolex and your little condo in Fort Lee don't mean nothing. I sold Ooh. tens of millions of records. You ain't sell one record. And that hit me like that. That struck a chord. That, you know that that really spoke to me, and, and, and it was good. I'm, I'm happy that it happened, and I thank her for that happening because that woke me up, and that let Is me she know. She's still that. alive, Shine. Yeah, Is she yeah, still she's alive? still. She's still. Yeah, she's a legend. She she had TV shows. She had movies. She sold you know tens of millions of records. I seen her she's on Rikers alive. Island when I went to see you. She was sitting on your lap. Yeah, so so listen. When I went to visit you, I'm like, not that one. Sitting on, not, not that not, one. Not, not that one. Ah, oh, damn, son. <laughs> yeah, Man. but 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 it was the, more the more. That. I, well, listen, I, I'm I'm married with a beautiful wife. I know. know we, that's my wife. Yo, listen, Sean, we just God taking a walk through memory lane. I see the yeah. family every day. I see the wife, yeah. Yeah. the baby. God bless yeah. us. We the most. So we just we just put it in, in perspective. We put in perspective how I got to the bad boy song the journey because it was a journey like i said you know i was young millionaire didn't know what the dude thought a million dollars was a lot of money didn't realize a million dollars is nothing but this r&b superstar and there was another rap superstar we ain't gonna say who she is they both put me you know in check and put me in perspective and let me realize that I'm not here just to have, you know, a nice watch or a nice car. I'm here to be a legend. You know, when it's said and done, you know, whether I sell, sell tens of millions of records, you know, I want to make classic albums. I need to distinguish myself. I need to establish, shine the brand that could live forever, that could be exactly where we are right now, which is 20 years later. We celebrating the Shine album, September 26th. And I'm a hip hop legend. You know, I put out two classic albums. I might have never even put out an album if it wasn't for those encounters where people, you know, told me about myself. And I realized at that moment in time what I wanted to be. So when the ball dropped, 1999, 1998, December 31st, that was it. I said, listen, no more Chris Style, no more buying out the bar. No more none of that. Like, I was so crazy. You know, me and Puff is, is, is cool now. We've reconciled. At that time, I was so crazy. I was such a crazy Brooklyn kid. I used to try to talk to his girlfriend. You oh. know, I, I might have even snuck off with, with one of his, you know, favorite girlfriends. Um, that's, how, mm -hmm. that's how out of it I was as a young boy. Wait a minute. Wait a yeah. minute. Yeah. It's a joke remote moment. Like, <laughs> will, we, will we know one of these girl, the girlfriend? I'm, I'm not gonna say who it is. You have to ask him off the record and let him tell you the story. Maybe he'll come on after this. Cause like I said, me and Puff you know is all right. I spoke to Puff maybe like two right, months ago. He, he supports my candidacy. I saw y'all good. He supports what you're doing. That's my guy. Okay, so let's spin it and say. You in Jamaica, y'all shooting this video. You got Wolf rest in peace with you. Yeah. You got the goons with you. They yeah. chasing the bands. This is an iconic yeah. moment in hip hop. Iconic. What was that like? Being a young dude, million dollars in the bank account, having some shit like this out. You know, you know, at that point, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the ego, it was all about the art. It was all about, you know, me making the greatest records and I wanted to go down in the annals of hip hop history. I wanted to be, you know, one of the greatest ever. Uh, and that's what I was chasing, you know, so I wanted to make timeless classic music. So before I got to Jamaica, you know, I had to get on Funkmaster Flex. I'll never forget, it was like May, and, and, and Flex, you know, was just dropping bombs after bombs after bombs. That was really the moment, you know, because I really fought to get to Jamaica. 
I fought to even get in the studio after, you know, the entire incident, you know, in Club New York, you know, because BMG wanted to drop me and I might have never came out uh, with the album. Uh, this is, you know, 1999. After the incident? After the incident? After the incident, you know. So by the time I got to Jamaica, I'll tell you what was happening in Jamaica. In Jamaica, I was fasting. I didn't, I was fasting because, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I've always been a spiritual person. So what was happening for me in my life at that time was a miracle because that incident in Club New York almost ended my career. And, you know, I would have just went back to Brooklyn, you know, and I would have been, you know, nobody, you know, and all I used to pray for is, you know, I know that I defended myself. I defended my friends. And my prayer to God. I said, Sean, said, Sean, yeah. when that happened, yeah. when that incident allegedly, you allegedly did that, yeah. did you feel as if you were in fear for your life or was you protecting your friends? I was, I was in fear for my life. What would make and you was, think, in top of the world, you in there with Pop, yeah, because, you in there because with Scar, Listen, no, no, no. Scar, Scar, who was the instigator, I know Scar from Brooklyn. Those, those are my guys. I didn't really have a problem with them. That wasn't my beef. That was that was Puff's issue. They had a problem with Puff for whatever reason. I don't know what their problem was with Puff. I'm not saying that it was a legitimate problem. But so that what wasn't I'm saying, my problem. What I'm saying to Scar, you is Scar, Nino, and the entire Brooklyn crowd was in Club New York. I seen them. It was all love. But when they started arguing with Puff, I know what these Brooklyn guys are capable of. I know what Scar is capable of. I knew what Nino was capable of. I know. Um, my charger. I know what happens once these arguments start. You know, when these arguments start, you know, it, it, it becomes it becomes a problem. I'm just trying to charge my phone. What I'm it saying to you, I'm saying to you, so Sean. Once Scar, once Scar starts saying, you know, I'm going to kill you, you know, you DOA, you know, once he starts talking crazy, yeah, I, I became afraid for my life. I know what happens, you know, once he says, you know, it's, it's about to happen, you know, it, it, it's about to happen. And I seen somebody reach for a gun. And I reached for my weapon and I defended my friends and myself because once he starts firing, once whoever else pulls out a gun starts firing, it doesn't stop there. So, you know, Sean, you don't think, yo, Sean, you don't think I'm over here with Puffy. There's two ways to think of it. I'm over here with Puffy. I'm over here with J-Lo, the biggest, richest stars in the world. This shit going to be on CNN. Or, or, or do you just react at the time like, yo, I got it? I'm thinking about saving my life. I'd rather be tried by 12 than carried by six. Mm -hmm. And how did Puffy take it at the moment? Did he take it as, yo, you fucking my shit up doing that? Or thank you for saving my life? You know, I think for him, it was more, you know, he's a corporation. And he's just thinking about the corporation. So obviously, you know, something like that affects the corporation uh, terribly. Um, but at the, at the time, I was just thinking life or death. You know, so, See, so didn't we, we, didn't, know, have a, we didn't have an opportunity for him to say thank you for saving my life, for saving Jennifer's life, you know, for saving all our lives because he was thinking about, you know, the corporation, and you know, the, that put the corporation. Do you think he thinks you jumped the gun? Do you think he thinks you jumped the gun? You know, you'd have to ask him that. You could ask me, do I think I jumped the gun? And my answer is absolutely do you think not. Absolutely not. And so now you in trial, one of the most legendary trials in the world. Yeah. You fighting for your life, Puffy fighting, Wolf fighting. Uh, and we ain't got to go into detail, but I feel like you felt like 
the other lawyers was like, yo, my guy ain't do it. Maybe that guy did it. That's that's the word on the street. That's 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 absolutely what it was, you know, and 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 you know, Puff apologized. He did apologize to me for that, you know, when we met in Paris. And you know, he did say, you know, he could have handled it better, but he was under a lot of pressure, you know, from the lawyers, you know, to throw me under the bus. Uh, and, and that's exactly what, you know, Benjamin Brofman uh, and, and, and Johnny Cochran and, and the entire uh, Dream Team, that was their position, you know, because, again, Puff was a corporation. You know, Puff, uh, you know, is, is a half a billion dollar corporation. And so nobody is going to sacrifice the corporation, uh, you know, for, for, for anyone else. You know, and I'm taking that J-Lo was terrified. Huh? I'm taking that J-Lo was terrified. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously it was it was a, a terrifying moment for all of us. I was terrified because I know Scar. You know, rest rest his soul. You know, he's dead now, but I know Scar. I know these guys from Brooklyn. I knew what they were capable of. So that was not me trying to, you know, flex. That was not me trying to demonstrate bravado. That was not me trying to get a name. That was me really trying to, you know, see my mother the next day. And, and I was always taught that it's better to be tried by 12 than carried by 6. And you know what's crazy, though, Sean, is like I believe consistency is key. And I believe yeah. you judge a person by the action. And if something happens and it's something real questionable of anybody, I go back to that same person and I say, well, how this person's been every other time? And then I got to judge him by that. So, like, so you, after 10 years in jail, after being in Belize, changing your life, you saying the same shit. So why yeah. wouldn't I believe you by saying yeah. you was in fear for your life? Yeah. And that's why you did that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. You go to and jail. And, you know, you know uh, uh, one of the things I want to put in perspective is, you know, uh, you know, that's part of it, but the most important part of it, which I think, you know, you told me before we got on here, we were going to inspire the world. You know, I see a lot of, a lot of darkness, you know, um, a lot of destructive forces are out there right now that have a platform that are misleading, you know, our people. And, you know, I think that I'm the embodiment the embodiment of integrity because the way I behave after my arrest and during my trial is very important because there's nothing more that district attorney wanted than the conviction of Sean Puffy Combs. There was nothing more. And I'm going to go on the record saying I think Buffy would have killed himself if he would have. And this is on Revolt TV. So yeah. they can but, call but, me, they but, can argue with but, me, they can but, do whatever. Uh, I'm going to go on record and think Puff Daddy was yeah. not going to do 10 years in jail, 20 yeah. years in jail. Yeah. He was not. But I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that I want to inspire the new generation that there is such a thing as integrity. There is such a thing as morals, as values, as principles. And I prefer, you know, you could argue that if I were to, Cause I, you know, I guess there's another rapper that just told on his entire crew, and he's out now, and he gets, you know, a bunch of streams and you know, millions of people tune into his live. I prefer to be, you know, you know, penniless. You know, I, I prefer to just have a, a regular life and be a, a, a regular nine to five or whatever. And have now let's get to that. Hold on, let's get to this, Sean. Let's get to yeah. this, Sean. It's great that you opened up that window. When you was coming up in the game, you was calling yourself Shine Po. Yeah. As if you were influenced by Al Po from Harlem. Yeah. yeah. And I never understood that. And yeah. after you did your time and people took the stand against you and all that, did yeah. you ever look at that and say, maybe this is a mistake calling myself Shine Po? You you know in in retrospect, I you know I guess you could you could make that 
argument. Um, it's a big argument. Make that, you can make that argument. You know, I, I didn't. I didn't go out like you didn't Al realize Bro. the ramifications. But I, I didn't go, but I didn't go out like after Al the Bro. shot. But I didn't go out like Alpo. Oh no, no, I didn't no. go out like Alpo. No. So, so, so I took the name. You know, I got the name Alpo. Oh, I got the name Sean Poe from one of Alpo's girlfriends, who was my girlfriend, and she gave me the name Poe because, you know, she thought, you know, that I was just like him. You know, I was young, millionaire, you know, from the streets. And, you know, that's how, that's how I got that name. You know, so it kind of just, it kind of stuck with me. And, so as you, know, you reflect back, you realize that the But, poem, you know, there's, Ed, there's, there's Edgar Allan Poe as well, the poet. <laughs> so, you know, you know. You I, heard I it here, this is life. a jumper moment. Yeah, I, I didn't pat in my life. Yo, Edgar Allan Poe. God yeah, damn, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't you would have told my me life. that story first. Yeah. I wish you would have just said, whoa, wait a minute. I'm like the great narrator, Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, so I, listen, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm transparent. I'm not going to sell you Sean, anything. Sean, I've gone, Sean, yeah. I've gone to visit other rappers other than yourself in jail. And they've all been in protective custody. they all been different, man. I went to see you on Rikers Island, and you had a different R&B rap super Tell your wife I love her. And I respect yeah, her, yeah, and I want to send her a gift. No, 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 no. Because you know I got a wife for life. I'm not trying to throw shit in the game. Not I'm at just all, not at this. all, not at all. I'm trying to paint the picture, right? Just, but yeah. I respect your wife and your family to the highest level. No, we just, we just, this is, this is in the book. This is in History. the film. This so I walk in Rikers Island, you tell me to yeah. come, yeah. and you got an R&B who sells millions of records sitting on your lap in the yeah. middle of Rikers Island, and the prisoners yeah. are all over, and I'm there with you, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, Sean, yeah. he's just in jail. He's, he's in here like it's the streets. Yeah. And... What was it like? Was it different for you when you went up north than it was in Rikers Island? Because in Rikers Island, I seen you. Uh, it, it, it was it was a joke. Yeah. No, I, you know I wouldn't. You know, being being incarcerated, there's nothing about being incarcerated that's a joke. Um, it's a nightmare. You know, it really is a nightmare. No matter how you slice it and you dice it, you know. But I'm a warrior, and I condition myself you know, uh, that one day I was going to wake up from this nightmare. So really what I did is I just made the best of my nightmare. But I was living a nightmare, make no doubt about it. Um, you know, but I stayed uh, in prayer. I was a very spiritual person. I'm still a very spiritual person. I, I pray as much as I did then. I'm just a little bit more about actions, more about my charity work. You know, I, I have a charity, the Mesopotamian Human and Social Development Foundation. You know, we Let spend me. hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, every year, you know, helping uh, uh, people, you know, who are impoverished, single mothers, elderly people, drug drug addicts. Um, so that period was a nightmare. Make no doubt Oh, we get into that, right? I want to know. Going up north, going up north was a nightmare because I was further away from my, my family. But even when I was on Rikers, I didn't even take visits. I didn't even want to see anybody. I didn't even want anybody to see me in that position. The only reason I had you come and see me and I had that R&B superstar come and see me is to show love to my fellow comrades, mm. you know, to, to let them, to lift their spirits. Because mm. I, knew, I, I knew the joy and the happiness that that would bring to them. Uh, and, and that's what that was really about, you know, so. Okay, Sean. You know, yeah. Sean, you go upstate, right? Yeah. Most people go upstate, they either wild for the night or they become Muslim. Yeah. You become Jewish. Yeah. How did, please you explain. You know, my, 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 my great. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. This is, I want this, this is a, fuck a Joker moment. This is a Malcolm X moment. Like, we in jail yeah. and 
Malcolm turned into a Muslim. How did you turn into like a Hasidic Jewish? Yeah, well, you know, initially, um, initially, my parents, you know, my my uh, my great grandparents, great great grandparents, are Jews from Portugal, Lindo. Right, Lindo. They went to Jamaica, and they were um they were ship magnets from Jamaica, and then they came to Belize. You know, my great grandfather Rudolph and George Lindo, and then we go all the way back to David Lindo and to um Ephraim Lindo, back in the 1800s, coming from Portugal, going to Jamaica, and then coming to Belize. So that's a part of, me. you know, um that's a part of my truth. So maybe that's how did you discover this, spoke. Shine? Shine, how did you discover it? Everybody it was just a part shine. of family. It was just a it was just a part of family family understanding. Like, so before I, you, know, you was, even went to jail, there was people in your family was Jews. Well not not Jews like you know the, the Jews on, on Eastern Parkway, but just like Jews like regular Jews in Tel Aviv who who are Jews and Jews in New York who are Jews but they don't observe anything Jewish. And they're only Jewish because of, you know, their well, great, Shine, great grandparents. I seen you with the hat myself. You came to my show in Paris. Well, that was with that the was hat after, and the long jacket that with the after, curls. That was after I came out of incarceration. Because again, I, like you said, you judge someone. Shine, I thought you caught a lick or something. I thought you met some Jews in there that was billionaires. No, 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 and, no, no, no. No, that was that was my truth. Listen, you know, I changed my name to Moses. I changed my name to Moses. You know, Moses was married to an Ethiopian woman, by the way. Uh, you know, Moses is from Egypt. Egypt is in North Africa. So it's, it's really not far-fetched that you have African Jews. No, I believe you're true. I got, a, I, I got friends that are black Jews from Yeah, Egypt. but that's what I'm trying to say. You know, being a Jew is not necessarily a race. You know, being a Jew is a religion. Uh, you know, in a belief. Well, you know, if you feed in, if you feed into, if you feed into what the streets think, right? Yeah. Everybody thinks Shine comes home from ten years like Tupac and just bombs on everybody, and he's gonna go crazy. And then you come out, and you you you're changed. And it's not. It's a beautiful thing, Shine. It's well, well, no, we, you, you, you forgetting the period. There was a period where I was going. Yeah, I'm, I'm charging my phone, so it keeps falling. But there was a period where I was going, where I was going back and forth a little bit. You know, I had some stuff to say um, about some people when I first came out. Um, you know, but you know, I, I, I definitely regret that. You know, more so, uh, you know, than than sticking with the name Poe. That, that I was given, you know, by Alpo's girlfriend. I definitely regret all that negative energy. Uh, you know, I think I should have came out and I should have focused on making music um, and just focused on, you know, reestablishing, you know, uh, and securing my legacy. I, I think I spent way too much time worrying about other people. Um, and, and, and I should have just focused on myself. You know, but what happened is I, I ended up going to Israel, uh, you know, uh, after I came out, I did a multi-million dollar deal with Def Jam. L.A. Reid flew down to Belize on a private plane. Just want to say one love to all the Belizeans watching me out there because you got a lot of Belizeans in the States, in Los Angeles. I love you know, the Belizeans. I love the Belizeans. In, in Atlanta, you know, you got the Garifuna crowd, real heavy and real strong, the Belizean Garifuna people. You got the Belizean artists. We got some hot Belizean artists out there doing their thing. King Kosa, check them out. Um, Big Bang, you know, check them out. You know, those are two of the biggest uh, right now out there in the States trying to do their thing. OT Genesis is a Belizean. He's a Gary from a Belizean, you know, so, so maximum respect to him. You know, but I came out, I went to Israel just, you know, to go for vacation for Rosh Hashanah. Uh, which is something that, you know, I have been saying for the last 10 years that, you know, next year in Jerusalem. So I didn't really come out to go be a Hasidic Jew or to become ultra-Orthodox. You know, I just came out to go visit Jerusalem. It's the holy land for everybody. It's the holy land for Catholics. It's the holy land 
for Muslims. It's the holy land for everybody. And I just, you know, wanted to touch the holy land. And when I went there and I seen them kids that look just like me, because you got a lot of Jews in Israel, you know, that are Sephardic Jews from Iraq, from Iran, from Ethiopia, you know, from Egypt that look just like me. And I seen them kids running around with them little things coming down their, their, their skull. It, it just spoke to me, you know, and, you know, we see a lot of people suffering from mental illness, a lot of rappers breaking down mentally right now. Uh, you know, I, I was very concerned that after 10 years that I would preserve my mental health and I would preserve you know, my, 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 my state of mind. And, and, you know, I think it was important. That journey was important. Those years that I did in Israel were very important, which is leading to where we at now, where I'm running for the House of Representatives. And I'm going from, you know, being in trouble with the law to making laws that will not oppress the, the very few, uh, will, will, not, will not oppress the marginalized, will not oppress you know, those people who are impoverished and who don't have means to do okay, better for Sean, themselves. So they, 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 they might make a mistake and go and commit crimes in order to feed themselves and feed their families. And so as Ari uh, Melber was talking about on his show, the justice system punishes them to a level where they could never recover from that and they're criminalized in perpetuity. Uh, I'm in a position now where I can legislate and create policy at the root to prevent anyone from even being in a position where they're so desperate to commit crimes. But if they were to happen to commit a crime and make a mistake due to whatever factors or whatever influences, I can make sure that they have a path to redemption using myself as the greatest example. You know, uh, after I came back to Belize, 10 years ago, the, the first thing I did was I went to the children's home and I went to visit the kids in the hostel. I went to visit the kids whose you know, parents couldn't take care of them because they were too out of control. And I went to talk to them and try to inspire them and try to lift them up. I went to the prisons to try to say to my brothers and my sisters in the prisons that you know there's a better way and, and I'll be there for them to support them. That's what I've been doing for the last 10 years. I've been helping the musicians in Belize out of my pocket, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, I'm a living, walking uh, redemption song, redemption story. And so it's important for me, as someone who said, they're America, you know, I'm only what you made me. It's important for me who sung all these songs about systematic oppression and a system that doesn't work for the masses. I'm in a position right now to make sure that at least in Belize, I can create policy and legislation that's gonna work for the impoverished, that's gonna work for the marginalized and the vulnerable in our society. So that's what Israel did for me. Israel gave me the opportunity to breathe. You know, I sat in the cell for 10 years. That, that's a nightmare. And I sat in the cell for something that I didn't do. I sat in the cell for trying to defend myself and my friends and self-defense, they have stand your ground laws in Florida where you from, mm -hmm. where, where you living now, Joe, mm -hmm. where if somebody tries to hurt you, you're allowed to defend yourself. So imagine sitting there for 10 years for defending yourself and your friends and watching your life, your career. Even though I was lucky to put out a number one album, it's still not being out there performing in front of tens of thousands of people doing what I do. I love making music. I love They took time. They took time. See, time is the most precious thing yeah. in the world. And they took yeah. it, and that's why they invented prisons to take time from people. You understand? And like, and I believe everything you say. And I yeah. believe you change. And I'm rooting for you to win the, uh, the election. You deserve it. You have a yeah. beautiful family. You have a beautiful spirit. <laughs> And the reason why I walked them through this, and I don't do yeah. this with everybody. Everybody got different stories. Yeah. Everybody ain't as real as you, Sean. I'm keeping yeah. it real. Like you did. Yeah. Like a real man. You believe in your own uh, 
Israel. And we we've been friends. You, you got to tell them we've been friends. We've been friends for twenty years. We've, we've been, been friends, friends before years. you went to jail. That's what I'm saying. For twenty years, we just, since we met in '99, I, I guess twenty-one years. And and I love you. And what you want me to tell somebody? But I needed you to understand that because even me, somebody like myself, I was a bad guy before I rap. And there's people in the Bronx, there's people, police, you know, who believe that no way this guy changed. No way this guy, and I've been screaming at everybody, I change. I'm a nice guy. I used to be with 100 guys. Now I'm with my wife and my daughter. And they still don't believe me, right? I got friends who are powerful, who are rich, are politicians, that their friends tell them in their ear, watch it with this guy. This guy is, and they say, you can't stop me from loving this guy. This guy's a good man. He gives back every chance. He looks out for his community. So I know where you coming from. So that's why I wanted to explain to people the whole thing. Not to glorify the past or what happened, but to show that someone can honestly change their life and become a beautiful person, a good man, a family man, and even better yet, a politician that can actually make laws that affects the people, the common people. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I wanted you to tell your story, not for nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a and, uh, absolutely, absolutely, and I, I definitely, I hope that, as you said, we can inspire, we can inspire this generation uh, to believe in, in principles, in morals, in values, and in integrity. It really does matter. Character really does matter. You know, who you are as a person really does matter, and that's why I think we've been friends for so long, because I've been... Uh, you know, my battery is going out. But again, I've been this guy with integrity uh, throughout, you know, throughout every period of my life, no matter what I've been through. I've been the same guy. And I think that's very important. And that's what has led me to the point I'm at in my life now where I can lift my nation up. The same way I see the beautiful work you do for Puerto Rico, you know, when they're going through. Uh, there are difficulties. You're always there. I see you getting on the jet, you and Jay and, and the Rock Nation and everybody. And that's what life is really about. Life is about service to others. And, you know, I thank hip-hop. I thank hip-hop music for making me who I am. Because as a legislator, as a leader, I thank hip-hop for that. Hip-hop taught me how to be a CEO. Taught me. I own my own publishing company since I was 19 years old. I started off with a joint venture, then I got a, a, a administrative deal, and I own my own publishing company. I own my own record uh, label, my own production company. Hip hop taught me how to be an entrepreneur, which is what I'm teaching young people in Belize. Oh, when do you run? Belize, when you run for office? What date? November fourth. Uh, I'm coming down there, Sean. I'm yeah, coming open, down there. We open the air. We open the airports. Uh, October 1st, if anybody wants to donate, they could donate to my PayPal, uh, a shine, uh, shine barrel, uh, mess up 2020 uh, at gmail.com. I'm coming, say that again, say that again, shine. Shine barrel, mess up, that's M E S O P 2020 at gmail.com. You know, but again, it's all about Sean, character. I'm coming integrity. down there. I'm coming yeah. down there if you allow me to. And I want to put up posters. I want to talk to the people. You, I want you to need, shake I, I need you to come down with that bag. I need you to bring some bags with you. Because, I'm you know, coming with the bags. Are, I'm coming right, with the sure, bag. Make sure you knock on all the doors. Yes, tell all your friends. I, thought you I, was see you out there. I see you yes, out there I, with Hutch yes, and Daddy. I thought you was a change man, man. Yo, that, no, you're shaking me down. Yes. You got it. No, I'm, I'm just telling you. You got it. You know, Obama, Sean, Biden, all the guys that run I'm for the president, they got to come down with the finances. We got to we gotta make I'm sure that coming. we have the I'm coming. I'm coming. And I'm going to help you 
have people donate to your shit. There's no doubt about it. I'm coming right. down, and Khaled is in the arm um, things, and I'm going to try to gas him to come to, and we're going to go to Belize, and we're going to put up posters for you. Look at, yeah. look at what Khaled just said. Shine the real one. Yo, we coming, bro. There's nothing yeah, better than We bring the bags. I just, I the just bags saw him easy. in Jamaica. I just saw him in Jamaica last I saw him in Jamaica last year. We coming to stand right Shout next out to, to Bush, you. Bush Bantan. Bush Bantan, yeah. When Bush Bantan came home, you know. Yes. Yeah, respect you call to Bush me. Bantan. You call me and you say, yo, Joe, I'm out in Jamaica. I said, shine, don't worry. And I plugged you right yeah, in yeah. with Khaled. And, you know, because you are family, yeah, yeah, we yeah. love it you for was, life. It was good to see Khaled. Yeah, it was good to yo, see Khaled. Yo, shine. Let's keep in touch because my battery's wasting too. Let's keep in touch. And I'm coming down there. You need bags? We get bags. Promise. We'll get Thank bags. You, my brother. Thank but you, my brother. I want to come in person. I want to see you win. I want to stand there and look at you win. That's what I and, want. And it's going to be a great moment for hip hop. It's going to be a great moment for hip hop when I get elected to the House of Representatives because that's what hip hop is. Hip hop is transformative. Hip hop is transcendental. Look how many hip hop billionaires we have. That's what we do. We're not just young black men that get shot in the back or, or they, they step on our knee or they, they put their knees on our necks and they treat us like animals. No, we're legislators, you know, we're CEOs, you know, we're, we're, we're business owners. And, and so this is going to be a great moment for hip hop for me to get elected to the House of Representatives and show the other side. My brother, I love you. God bless you. Thank Please you for tell your me, wife I love her, your family, you. and I'll be in Belize. Everybody visit Belize. I, I encourage everybody to come to Belize when Joe is coming to Belize. Oh no, everybody, I'm you're welcome. Once again, hold up, Sean. One more before we go, because you know this is the big, 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 biggest show in the game. Yo, Sean, tell them how to donate yeah. to the uh, PayPal. That's that's S H Y N E. B-A-R-R-O-W-M-E-S-O-P 2020 at gmail.com. Sean, I love you, my brother. Thank you for everything. Thank you for transparency. I love you too, my brother. Thank you for all the years of friendship. We, listen, we, we didn't even get to talk about your artist, Angelica Villa. Ah. We need the Bonnie and Sean song. Come on, man. Yo, Sean, you thank you for out. clearing that. You, 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 you got to get me. clearing you. that. You got to get Stop me back on brother. here so we can talk about music. I want to come back on September 26th so we can talk about the Shine album. Let's do it. September 26th, we come back with the Shine album and everything else. I love you, my brother. This All right. God bless you, out. my brother. All right, peace. All right, peace. You don't know who I know. Do say Friday. Do say Friday. This is the biggest show in the game, man. I'm tired of it. We gonna keep going till we get that bag. The whole shit was a joker moment. And the man done change. And you can't change. It's called redemption. It's called, hey, guess what? I was around the wrong people. 